on RVN TV. I am your host, Ashley Owens, your personal networking concierge, and I'm here 12 30, 1 o'clock on Thursdays during your lunch break, where I interview the power networkers of the greater Philadelphia, South Jersey area, and now national because we're doing virtual calls. So today I have the pleasure and the privilege of interviewing Mr. Kevin Demedio of. Thank you very much. Um, uh, to the attorney, uh, attorney managing member of Deme uh, Demedio Law. So Kevin, you and I, re thank you for being here, number one. Very excited for you to be here. Um, but number two, you and I recently met. How did, do you remember how we connected? I forget who it was. Uh, I do not, Ashley. And again, thank you for having me. This, sure. is, uh, this is very exciting. This is much better than the average typical Zoom call that right. I have with clients. No offense to any of my clients. Or the courts, you know, all the courts are doing things by Zoom now. This is much really? more, uh, how should we say, entertaining and exciting. So the lighting's better. <laughs> that, yeah, <laughs> so far. <laughs> but with all that said, I'm not sure how we connected. I just know that uh, it might have been LinkedIn or whatever. But I know we, uh, you know, we're networking on my side and relationship building on your side. I know we crossed paths somewhere along the line, and here we are. So. Oh goodness. Well, so tell me more, Kevin. Tell me what kind of law do you practice? Or tell the audience, because I know, but tell the audience sure. what kind of law do you practice? Sure. So I often say my elevator pitch, you know, my what, who am I, what do I do, you know, yeah. the five-minute you know, introduction, that type of thing is I'm a business services attorney. Okay. What does that mean? Right. Uh, business services is a large umbrella of uh, legal work, can be. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of act as outside counsel to a lot of small, medium-sized business companies. And a lot of those uh, relationships, uh, there's business planning, which also leads into the personal planning. That leads into uh, estate planning as well. So that's a portion of my practice as well. But the business services always seems to touch and concern operations. Everything touches and concerns real estate and tax matters mm -hmm. all over the gamut. And unfortunately, sometimes, you know, my clients either find themselves in, in, uh, enmeshed in litigation or they need to sue somebody to get, you know, to get their response in the contract or what they're dealing with. But again, a lot of business services, tax related matters, a lot of real estate related matters and things associated therewith, whether it be environmental issues or, you know, municipal uh, approval issues, things like that. So and, that's kind of it in a nutshell. And this is your practice, correct? Correct. I opened my own law firm about two years ago. I got the permission of my better half to do that. <laughs> And I was with a large Philadelphia-based firm and another firm uh, prior to that um, before I was in-house counsel. Right. And big firms are great, medium-sized firms are great, but after I developed my, I'm gonna call it my network base, my connections grew to right. you know multiple thousands of connections. Right. Uh, I just felt that I could connect and service my clients better in a smaller, more boutique type fashion mm -hmm. versus the larger firm with the bigger overhead that were kind of driven by the, you know, the billable hours and the rates and things like that. I often say, Ashley, sometimes that, you know, in the larger settings, you know, you, you, you fight to get the client, you fight for the client, then you fight to get paid by the client. Here in this type of more smaller boutique type uh, relationship with my clientele, uh, you can establish a much more direct and how, how should I say applicable business relationship to then work on their matter specifically. So. That, that's one of the things I enjoy about being in, in the small firm. Do you think that you have a greater appreciation for your clients now, now that it's one-on-one -on -one and not one to a big firm? A greater, I'm sorry? A greater appreciation for your clients now that you're one-on-one -on -one rather than one yep. to a larger firm? A absolutely. Many times in the larger firm settings, you know, you might have a, a colleague in, in Delaware or Pennsylvania or somewhere else and they're transferring a matter to you because you're based in New Jersey and you might not really know the client. Mm -hmm. Here, it's a lot more one-on-one. -on -one. You can connect a lot more directly and you're able, you're able to establish a pretty clear and transparent relationship and understanding that we go forward. And that really, helps pro, that really helps productivity with the matter as it's developing and you're addressing it. And also from a business perspective, business side, it, it facilitates you know, the client you know, app, you know, paying for services, things like that, which can you know, always part of any business is getting paid, so. Right. What do you think has been the biggest challenge now that the world is the way that it's going right now for small businesses? Mm -hmm. I think it varies depending upon the sector. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in our sector, uh, uh, one of the things I talked about before was being on a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting with some of the courts. Uh, the courts have surprised me immensely with how fast they've adapted to with this technology. Uh, but getting back to your question specifically, uh, you know, a lot of the small businesses, the challenge is going to be 
you know, how do they adapt? How do they protect their bottom line? Right. Right. And and all the other costs that go into those small businesses, whether it's overhead, like, you know, lease payments, you know, property issues, you know, so forth and so on. Um, I tell you one thing is that the remote working has really, really taken me uh, by surprise. It's so effective and so efficient in so many different areas and industries that it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to happen with the commercial real estate market. Mm-hmm. You might see a little bit of a roller coaster with that. Right. Uh, because if, if I'm an employer and, you know, I've got a couple of folks that work for me remotely, um, if I can track their metrics, their analytics, and they're basically getting the job done, and then I can bill for that, and, and you know, and then we get revenue from that, why do I need office space right. for those types of, but other certain small businesses, especially the food industry, I mean, you know, that's part of going out to eat. You want to go out to eat, you want to go out to that environment, you right. want to, it's a social aspect. So, you know, the, I think that, you know, that, that's going to be a different adaptation as we work our way through this. What do you think, in your opinion, when it comes to starting a business? If you're working with small to medium-sized business owners, sometimes entrepreneurs at the same time for business services, what do you think people don't do that they should do when starting a business legally? So you really need a business plan, right? What is your plan? And that could be as simple as some notes on one page. It could be multiple pages, multiple chapters. Um, you know, what, what is your end game, you know, short, medium, long term, mm-hmm. you know, what, what are we doing here? What do you want to do? And, you know, what do you, what do you, what do you think it looks like? With that said, you know, as you're fleshing that out, you need to rely on your trusted advisors. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to speak with an attorney. You want to speak with an accountant. You want to speak with insurance folks. You want to speak with, you know, payroll and HR folks, depending upon if you're going to have individuals working for you. Right. They're all components of developing this plan because you got to get your plan in place and you got to get your numbers squared away to, and to start then to project and then start move forward in that direction. Obviously, setting up a company from a legal standpoint, whether you're talking about an corporation or an LLC, things like that, okay. you know, they're conversations we have all the time. Uh, you know, and I often include the accountant because there are tax ramifications you want to deal with. Right. Um, some folks prefer the sole proprietorship and they just want to operate on their own. That's lean and mean, and, and that works as well, too, in certain things, in certain industries. But, uh, you know, it definitely starts with a plan and develop it, work it through. And again, you got to rely on your trusted advisors to get as much input as you can in order to hopefully have the highest chance of success. What are your thoughts on legal zoom and rocket lawyer for somebody who's just starting up that doesn't necessarily have the funds yet to have that trusted advisor i'm sorry legal Le- legal zoom and rocket lawyer.com those those kinds of sites sure yeah what are your thoughts on that as a professional so um mixed yeah. uh, I, I get it i understand that they're very affordable very direct it's online it's easy to do for certain things but i'm here to tell you that my interaction with with rocket lawyer and legal zoom and all that jazz is you know, they're spending more money, clients are spending money with me to correct certain issues mm. that they had there, yeah. certain deficiencies that they had there, or certain counseling they didn't receive, which would have supplemented and made their decision making a little bit better when they move forward. Whether it's something as simple as correcting a certificate of formation for an entity, mm-hmm. or the way it's structured, or, you know, an operating agreement that, hey, you know what, we, we just downloaded this 30-page operating agreement, that, but did they read it? Probably not. Yeah. Um, and did they need a 30-page operating agreement? Did they need an operating agreement at all, depending upon the type of entity, whether it's passive or active? So there's a lot of things that, you know, I, I, you're not going to get from those type of online sources. Hence, you know, it might be worth, it, at very least, an initial consult with an attorney to flesh that picture out. And that's either going to assure you, okay, you know what, LegalZoom is going to get me covered. You know what, it's not going to cover me. I'm going to go with the, you know, my attorney and talk to my accountant and, and you know, do it the more traditional way. And what, when somebody works with you, what, what kind of service that can they expect? Can you take me through your onboarding process with a new client? As far as uh, scope of services? Yeah, scope of services. So if somebody comes to you and they have an issue with, let's say, uh, a company is being bought out, and, well, and anything, what, when, what can somebody expect when working with you while working so, with you? So for me specifically, where I am at in my, you know, in my stage in my career, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I appreciate experience more and more every day, yeah. right? And and I, and I have conversations all the time with clients, with prospective clients, current clients. And what you can expect is the experience that you're going to get from your 
trusted advisors from your attorney. And, you know, whether it's a real estate transaction, I've dealt with, you know, hundreds. Uh, you know, if it's, an, if it's just starting up an entity, you know, I've had so many issues that I can relate to them and, and that will help them focus and be able to move forward a little bit more effectively. But again, to consult with an experienced attorney, nothing against younger attorneys, younger, right. you know, they're, they're gaining experience day to day too. But that's one of the things I, you know, with my current firm and, you know, I'm trying to bring to the table in, my, in this boutique type of law practice to my clients right. is, you know, an effective, efficient, and uh, timely response to their issues, whether, you know, large, medium, or small. Is there a particular trend in cases that you're working on right now because of the pandemic? Mm, trends as far as uh, c common common things that are happening with within small well, we've businesses definitely right seen an uptick in estate planning yeah so yeah. you know people are concerned about that people are you know they want to get their estate plan across the line they want to dot t's or strike that cross t's dot i's yeah. uh things of that nature a lot of times with estate planning you know people would rather you know look at their phone and and buy a washing machine on Amazon than deal with estate planning issues <laughs> and getting a will in place, power of attorney, health care directive, right? Yeah. Maybe they want to set up a trust or a revocable trust for insurance purposes or a uh, uh, things of that nature. Um, but that we've seen a lot, uptick in that. Uh, we've seen a lot of clients, uh, you know, buying and selling properties, mm -hmm. buying and selling businesses, because I think this has given this this environment that we've gone through the last four or five months now, I guess. Yeah. Jeez Louise, it's crazy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think it's given people a lot of pause to think and then motivation to act, yeah. whether it's buying or selling or altering or changing, you know, their, their particular business model. So what, we're seeing that quite a bit as well. What has been your biggest accomplishments in starting your own firm? Mm, the, biggest, the biggest accomplishment? Yeah, or maybe the one, the one that you're most proud of. Well, Cause, the cause fact I feel that like I'm still you're, here, number one. Right. Uh, you're I'll such a humble guy that. in general that I, you know, I can assume, assume that these stories are, are, you know, kind of locked away in a nice little box. But, I mean, I think what you're doing is so important, especially now because the world is on fire. And having and small businesses and medium-sized businesses right now are struggling the most, especially entrepreneurs in that space. So I would love to hear one of your success stories. Yep. So uh, again, it's just, you know, for me, my biggest accomplishment is when, you know, you, you, I speak with a client, there's a matter, there's an issue, it's causing some type of stress or distress in a particular situation. And with all that said, uh, you know, if I can help them navigate their way through it and bring them to a place where they can get back to functioning, you know, and working on the business as well as in the business as needed, you know, it's that level of support. You know, really, that, that the outside counsel mm -hmm. role that I play quite a bit, you yeah. know, uh, is really, I, I think, that uh, brings a lot to the client, you know, and that satisfaction from the client and allowing them to move on and, and doing, doing what they're doing and better, right. bettering what they're doing, you know, that's, that's a big accomplishment for me anyway, from a day-to-day -day basis. Right. And I think your demeanor is so um, is so compassionate in the way that you'd be working with your clients that there is they don't feel like they're ever going to be told what to do, but more of this is why we're doing it this way. And I feel like <clears throat> with any professional that's in a and you know it's a lawyer that is you know the working it like like you said those trusted advisors, you you rely on them for the knowledge. You rely on them to guide you in and to advise you in those really hard decisions that you may or may not have to make. And so to have somebody like you to really cater and take care and encourage and guide um, especially in the, that advisory role um, it, it makes for a, a lot better of a of an interaction and um, you know working with you becomes bigger than just being you know this person's lawyer becomes this person's advisor and helping them get to the next step of their business sure. which could Certainly. be could be awful or meaning again the world is on fire right now but it, it gives them peace of mind and i think everybody right now needs that so kevin when we return we're going to talk to you more about your tactical tips and practical takeaways in networking in this new norm that we have today so stay tuned we'll be right back Hi, my name is Ralph Graves Jr. I'm the host of the Ralph Graves Jr. Show, and I want to invite you to pick up my book, Unstoppable. I wrote a book called Unstoppable. It's, it's seven universal laws that will transform how you pursue and achieve success. The one thing that my 20 years of law enforcement has taught me is that no matter who you are, we are all governed by universal laws, like gravity. 
But in this book, we're going to talk about laws like the law of forgiveness, laws like the law of control, the law of intelligent practice, the law of expectancy. I was able to see how those, no matter what their background was, those who, who identified and, and treated these laws with respect, they were able to go on and lead successful lives. So pick up this book and you can go ahead and pick it up at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, RalphGravesJr.com, where, um, anywhere where fine books are sold. Thank you. There you go, Richard. Oh, is that too hard for you? No. Is it too hard for you? Woo, we're playing catch now. <laughs> oh, shit. What do I want to be when I grow up? Maybe a musician? A veterinarian? Maybe an equestrian? Mommy? Well, why not be all these things and more? Consider joining me, Dr. V, with friends and colleagues as we explore a wide range of topics together. V is for variety here on RVN TV. Success with me, Ashley Owens, your personal networking concierge, where we talk to the power networkers, Greater Philadelphia and South Jersey area, and all over the world. I have the pleasure and privilege of e emailing. Good morning. I have the hi, Kevin. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you. Welcome back to the to the show. You've been wonderful. Um, I would really love to get into um, your perspective on this new norm, which is the virtual networking. As somebody who relies so much on the human-to-human -human interaction, especially with cases that could be really time sensitive, I mean, sometimes you need notaries to sign a lot of these pa this paperwork that they need you want to, when working with you. Can you tell me more about how you've been able to adjust to this new norm um, and then how you network uh, based off of this new normal? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question and, you know, still trying to figure it out. And one of the an analogies I use, Ashley, is the crystal ball analogy. You know, okay. my, my crystal ball never works perfectly. Yeah. Half the time it never works great. And I tell that from a client perspective, but, but as well as adjusting to this new norm, as you call it, um, you know, it's, you know, the conference calls used to be what they used to be, right? Mm -hmm. But now... Uh, I think if you're looking to try and have an impact and make that connection, yeah. you know, uh, the format of Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and, you know, WebEx and all those other things, you know, I think this is the kind of the way of the future. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I first got, when I came back into private practice in 2008, I left my in-house counsel position. Uh, I went into private practice and I had zero, zero clients because I was working in-house. Yeah. And over the last you know 10 plus years i grew my client base and my connections are over you know four or five thousand whatever the number is yeah. but that was all networking you know going to these different functions whether they're they're, they're you know functions at the town level function at the county level at the state level in many many industry functions on uh, philadelphia or the pennsylvania side of the river the new jersey side of the river mm -hmm. uh and you find out right quite quickly you know hey you know what this is a good source for me to meet folks that may become either what i'm going to call uh partners right uh relationship partners that may help you know with your client building right. or there might be a pool for clients there as well right uh and that's something you need to figure out now here we are today and you know you know you can't have gatherings of more than 25 people and you know i, I don't know how that that in-person networking is going to evolve and go forward right um, but I, I, you know, I am trying now to set up as many of these virtual meetings with current clients as well as prospects. Right. Not to mention other other uh, relationship partners, whether they're accountants so or financial advisors or insurance folks, things of that nature. And you know, this is this is what we have now. This is the new norm. I don't know what it's going to be like, you know, in the next, the third quarter, the fourth quarter, or next year. But this is, you know. This to me, the face to face really helps. And I'm impressed with a lot of folks are doing this, mm -hmm. right? And I've got clients that are in their 60s and 70s and a couple in their 80s. And, you know, they've got their phone in front of them. They can do the Zoom meeting. 
and it's interesting. It's really interesting. So, you know, that that's kind of you know where where I'm taking it. You know, and where this technology is taking us. I'm very impressed with the acceleration of the technology. Uh, one of the reasons that I left my old firm was they were kind of behind the curve with the technology, and you know, they were still dealing with paper, 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 and you know, file cabinets. This thing. One of the you know one of my mantras was I got to go paper free. We can go paper free. Right. And I think we're about ninety percent of the way there. So I think we're still going to need some paper documents when it comes to like estate planning, maybe wills, you know, things like that, trusts. Uh, but I think that's all going to evolve eventually once we get the electronic document situation a little bit more secure, a little bit more uniform, and it's going to be the way of the world. People are signing contracts now, left and right, DocuSign and all these other yeah. electronic, you know, formats. So, you know, it's a little nerve wracking for me because, you know, sometimes it just says click here, sign, click here, sign, click, and it doesn't tell you to read anything. Right. So I'm telling my clients, slow down, read it. Let's make sure we're comfortable with it because I'd rather revise the contract before we execute it than have to deal with it and amend it and execute amendments thereafter. But, you know, we're, we're dealing with it, trying to deal with this technology as best we can in the environment that we have as best we can. So within the networking space though, it seems like you're really relying heavily and being able to be more intentional about not only the people that you meet, but the power partners or strategic partners that you have. So it ends up being a really nice give and take um, kind of experience that you have with these people. So can you tell me more about for you, you know, when you're working with these with these professionals that are in a space that can give you a referral, how do you go about go about asking for it, and how you know what is your current networking style with these power partners? Yeah, so it's uh, you know it's funny because you know when I, again when I got back into private practice in 2008, you know the internet was kind of just expanding, LinkedIn just came out right, yeah. uh, Facebook, and now we have all this you know these virtual you know, uh, social media platforms. Right. Uh, but the business card still kind of held its ground. The physical business card for the longest, it still does to some extent. Yeah. I'm not sure where it's going to go after this no pandemic. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, for me, from my perspective as an attorney, the gold standard for a referral is word of mouth referral. Right. But and you're not going to get a word of, word of mouth referral until you connect with somebody and develop a relationship with somebody. And right. that's what you know I try and do with different individuals in the different industries, whether it's the accounting industry, insurance folks, um, you know, financial advisors, things of that nature. Uh, you know, you got to develop some type of relationship, and it's it's relationship based. At that point in time, if you, you connect with somebody, you build a relationship with them, and say, you know what, I know, you give Kevin a call, he can handle this, or I, I'll refer. You know, I always give two or three referrals. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to be that that uh, I don't want to say, hey, just call this person. This person can handle everything for you, because it's you, you're not going to connect with everybody. So I always try and give two or three referrals from that side here to call this accountant, call that accountant and see who you connect with, see who you're going to relate to. And that'll be the most positive, uh, productive type relationship you can have. And that'll help supplement, I think, the, the work on my side I'm doing with my client to develop that, that team of trusted advisors for that client. And how are you nurturing those ne that network? Yeah, so that's a challenge. Um, right. yeah. You know, just meeting you, for example, uh, I saw the way you, your LinkedIn was rolled out, um, you know, and, and I, I read uh, read about you, websites, there's so much information on websites, it's 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 insane. It's a lot. So, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm looking at the competition sometimes, I'm Good. looking at accounting firms, I do a lot with accountants and, and others, and, you know, and if someone piques my interest or catches, you know what, uh, this person might be able to fill a gap or avoid them having, mm -hmm. you know, because you want to be of value to your clients, right? right. Every, there's a certain tool for every job. Attorneys are that tool for certain jobs. Right. But you also want to be of value. Say, hey, you know what, if you've got a tax matter, if you've got an environmental matter, here's two or three environmental engineers that can help you with it, you know, that type of thing. And so, you know, to develop that relationship, you know, if, if you hear about a project or you hear about a matter, you hear about someone, you know, shoot them an email, hey, you know what, I just I just sent two folks an email, what's today, Thursday, Tuesday, uh, because they came across a, uh, a website designer. And I was like, wow, this, these websites are pretty good. Yeah. And I checked out some of his clientele and I sent them two emails, hey, how are you doing, you know, and I've already made those two connections just because they, they had interesting websites and I wanted to see their relationship with their web designer. It, it became, so it, it's things like that just to try and you know, establish relationships in, in your own industry, but obviously uh, you know, other areas. 
It becomes so much more in depth when you're starting to, like the, I mean, when your business is heavily referral based, um, it becomes less of what they can do for you and, what, and more on what you can do for them because you want them to give you a referral when they feel it's necessary to, right? So you're building up that know, that like, and that trust factor in order for people to kind of build this group, of, uh, this, this army around you that will advocate for you when you're not in the room. Um, and I feel like now more than ever, people are so thirsty for human to human interaction because we're all stuck at home. And I feel yeah. like everyone's becoming more and more um, intentional about the, those introductions because they have more time to really get to know that person because we have, we're not traveling 45 minutes in a car to get to a networking event. We're not scrambling to find this business card. It's one after another throughout the day. And it gives, just logistically, gives people more time to think things through. I personally love the fact that we're at home networking. I know I'm a you know networking concierge and, be, and on site was my entire business. However, I find that people now are more compassionate because we all have the commonality, which is going through the same thing right now, which is going through the, the COVID pandemic, it's going through the Black Lives Matter protests, it's going through the things that are going around in the country that are absolutely insane. I think everyone can empathize and um, with each other that no matter what we're going through, if I can help you in some way, whether it's a business referral to help your business, whether it's a resource that might be able to help you, whether it's a YouTube video, there's something you can do now that is labeled as a networking activity, but also a compassionate human activity as well. Um, that, so well said, so well you. said. And you know, and you mentioned you know going through this together. It, it, that sh a shared experience is really a big pillar to relationship building. Right. And let's face it, we're, we're all share. Everybody is sharing this experience, and right. obviously, so many different ways. But it is a relationship builder, and it adds some commonality right off the bat when you're trying to, you know, establish an initial relationship with somebody. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. it's so uh, trying to try to leverage that a little bit. I mean, I can't begin to tell you how many, you know, uh, new phone calls or first time phone calls or even emails. You know, start out with, you know, I hope you're well. <laughs> how are you holding up under this? You know. And, yeah. Make a joke, you know. Do uh, I'm not sure what day of the week it is. You know those kind of, you know, comments that help establish a little bit of rapport and, and yeah. build a relationship. But that's definitely, I think, you know, supplements the the networking aspect for sure. I think that you're, you know, what's great about what you're doing, the fact that you're leaning into the into the technology that is so important to just maintain a network, right? So leaving your bigger firm was a, a, a good move on your part because you thought that they were not necessarily um, progressing uh, as rapidly as they should be to be able to adhere to the needs of the client. And I think that with any business owner that's working and any business owner that is is networking, you got to be able to adhere to the needs of your your strategic partner and also your client. Um, and that's that's the part about giving being in a service industry. Your professional services. You are there to serve. You're there to give and to give value. Um, I, what I think is also important about what you do is that now you're so versatile and you can work with anybody in the tri-state in the country if you wanted to and it gives you a much wider experience with different cases and different things that you're that that you could potentially work on so everyone's networks are are growing just because of the nature of the fact that we're at home and now Absolutely. there's no gatekeeper you know there's nobody that you need to go through to get to that person and you're not restricted to just your location so kevin we have to wrap up and i hate it because i want to talk to you more but if you could do me a favor could you look directly into the camera that you're looking at <laughs> <laughs> and could you tell people how they can find you and connect with you? Sure, sure. So uh, the, the traditional phone call is great. If anybody, you know, my uh, main office number is 856-428-5577. Again, 856-428-5577. We're based in South Jersey in Haddonfield, which is right in Camden County. Uh, website is my last name, demediolaw.com, D-I-M-E-D-I-O-L-A-W.com. I invite you to come to the website anytime. There's a lot of information on that. And call anytime. I, one of the things I like being on my own, uh, Ashley, I have to tell you, is that I can entertain a lot more conversations and spend a lot more time, uh, especially where I think it's needed and there's a potential to help somebody. Uh, but also, if someone's just looking for a little bit of direction, I'm happy to give it to them and say, you know, do what you got to do and go. So it's uh, welcome. Uh, any kind of call. And, and uh, my email address is on the website too. So I'm right. still doing the email thing. That's uh, the bread and butter of communication, is I think, and will be. Snail mail, not so much, but you know. 
Kevin, thank you so, so much. Everyone, please make sure you reach out to Kevin, especially now during this crazy pandemic and the world that we live in. A little extra help and a little advice, uh, and having an advisor such as Kevin could really help your business and get it to the next step or help you get through whatever challenges that you're going through right now. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I'm Ashley Owens, your personal networking concierge on Connect to Success on RVN TV, uh, 12 31 o'clock on Thursdays during your lunch break. Uh, if you'd like to be a guest, please email Ashley at AshleySys.com. Come on, talk about your uh, practical tips and tactical takeaways in networking. And if you'd like these earrings and this outfit, this is not styled by me because I don't know how to dress myself, but Miss Bridget Battles, um, who's a stylist, is now working with me. So you're going to hear her name a lot on this uh, program. So we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Have a good day.